changeup is my bread and butter off speed pitch curveball and then I actually just started throwing a slider. So if you understand the angle to which you throw the baseball, it's important because this will affect your cutter, okay? Some guys throw it like this at the bottom of the horseshoe. I climb up and throw it at the top. And I never knuckled it like this. Then the changeup is kind of the polar opposite. That's more deep in my hand. I'm holding the, the bottom of the horseshoe here. In this video, you're gonna learn 17 baseball pitches explained from professional pitchers. You're gonna learn their pitching grips, how they threw the ball, and how they tried to use those pitches to get batters out, so pay attention. Before we get started, I just wanna say this video is sponsored by Cageless. Cageless is like the Airbnb of backyard batting cages. If you have a cage, list it for free with Cageless and earn some extra dough. If you need a cage, no problem, they got you covered. Search your area to find out what you can rent. Their network of quality, convenient, and affordable batting cages is growing every day. It's simple to use and free to join. Go to cageless.com to get started now. First up, Tommy Malone. He's a current MLB pitcher, veteran. He's been in the league for a long time, left-handed pitcher, and he's not known for his velocity. He has to rely on his stuff, his pitches. So pay attention to what he's talking about. Got a ball right here, so um, going through. So fastball, I mainly four seam fastball. Changeup is my bread and butter, off speed pitch, curveball, and then I actually just started uh, throwing a slider full time last year. Uh, I threw a little bit the year before, 2018, but um, it was kind of one of those pitches where like I hadn't really like trusted it yet, so like I'd throw it sparingly um, and probably mainly for balls, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so fastball four seam, just oh, just like that right here, just traditional four seam. Um, trying to just get that with all the analytics nowadays. Uh, I gotta get the the new terminology, the true spin, so you get like the the actual, um, I guess like more consistent spin, so it like really rides. And apparently, like I never knew this before all this analytics stuff started, so I didn't know that my ball does have ride already. Um, and then now it's just a matter of how we can figure out how to get maybe a little bit more. Um, Cause you know, like I've, I had always been um, approached by guys that I faced in the past. And they're like, they're like, I look at the radar gun and it says 86, 87, but like, it just jumps on me. And he's like, it looks like you're throwing a lot harder than you are. And like, I'm just like, okay, you know, maybe it's just, it's got to be obviously something that I'm doing. Um, and then obviously with the analytics now, it makes a lot more sense. But um, okay, so fastball change up, it's just traditional circle change, just right here. Two seam, basically a two seam circle change. So it's, I don't know, I don't know why, because I don't really throw a two seam. So, um, but it's worked. That's the, the pitch that I've, I throw the most. Well, obviously besides fastball, but like, um, it's one of those things that like I literally could be off in the off season, take two months off, come back, pick up a, a ball, throw a change up and it, it would probably work. Wow. So it's just one of the pitches that just clicked. Do you have an idea of like percentage of that pitch that you throw? Like are you so in the last 30 last percent? year? Yeah, it was like they wanted me to throw it more, obviously. So like we have those meetings, especially now with all the data and they're like, your change up's really good. You need to throw it more. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But um, is, I think, like 35%, maybe. Maybe it's somewhere in that range. And I think they my fastball. More, and they wanted more than that? They uh, they wanted it to be almost even with my fast one. I think it was pretty close. Nice. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, like I said, it's that's my pitch. So, like, <laughs> if there's a day that I don't have that, it's, it's going to be trouble. Unless I'm really <laughs> spotting up my fastball. But um, so next curveball, just the uh, I don't know, just <clears throat> bring it like right across the the little like horseshoe right here, sorry, right here. So right up over like this, and it's just one of those pitches that like it's okay. It's not like a, a great pitch, but like I can throw it for strikes, and I feel like I can move it around enough to to be a little bit successful with it. Um, what kind of movement are you trying to get on that? Uh just more 12 six I guess um it actually I think has helped a little bit more now because like I was talking about with my fastball like it has that ride so it does play up in the zone so now I can throw that fastball up in the zone and then work the curveball off of it 
So like, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. Coming out of it's the same still, tunnel. It, yeah. It's the same tunnel. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing with me is like the tunneling, especially, you know, with the fastball and the changeup. Those are the, those, that's the main tunnel that I would use for any at bat really. Um, and then now with the slider, which I'll explain, you know, show you, it's kind of the same thing. So I'd use the same tunnel, but you know, one's going this way, my chain is going this way and then fastball obviously staying straight. So uh, I think it's, it's definitely helped with that. But um, so moving on to slider, this, I don't know really how I got to this grip because this looks just like a two seam grip to probably most people that, that know grips. But so I'm using mainly just my middle finger right here and using the seam and just kind of like ripping it this way for my slider. And I think um, I saw it, I think it was Kluber throws his slider kind of like that, like that same grip. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to have a Kluber slider so <laughs> that hard. He probably rips it a lot harder and he throws a lot harder. But um, I just like played around with it and I started throwing it and it was like it was actually moving. And I had played with sliders before, but they were, you know, different grips. And and it was um, I don't know. I don't think I was really convinced that they were very good. And I started throwing this and um, I think it was just a perfect storm of stuff where um like it started moving and I was like, I kind of need another pitch. Maybe this could work. And I just kept throwing it. And it's, it's actually been a good pitch for me. Definitely. We'll start with the cutter. Um, the, I mean, any, any day of the week. Also, if anybody has a question about these pitches and wants to see some examples of me throwing them, you can go over to my YouTube channel and see how to throw all these also. So, but standard four seam fastball, right? I'm a little bit different with my thumb. We've been playing around with thumb placement lately. Um, I actually get a little bit further on the inside part of the ball. I think it's just my hands are so big, right? So that being said, the horseshoe needs to open up towards your pinky, okay? And so if we have this straight line right here, I'm sorry, with our, with our fingers here like this, the ball will roll off in a four seam and it'll go straight, right? This is what 100% spin efficiency is, right, when you throw. Now, the problem with this straight down 12-6 movement is that it's not in alignment with your arm path. Normally, your arm path is a little over here, right? And so 100% spin efficiency isn't a 12-6 type of spin. It's actually going here. So if you understand the angle to which you throw the baseball, it's important because this will affect your cutter, okay? So if we go back to the top of the horseshoe, one of the cool things about the cutter is you, John, and John, you and I did this before, but if you put your fingers up like this right here, there's this line, right, in our index finger, right? If you see mine to yours right here, mine's a little bit greater than yours, right? And I have a really long birdie finger. This is why I don't have a very good two seam because it's uncontrollable for me because sometimes it just goes crazy because it rolls off. But what it does help with is my cutter, right? So guys who have long birdie fingers normally get late action either way if you know how to control it. I can control my two seam now. It took me a very long time to figure out how to get this extra long finger to work. But that being said, this line goes from your four seam and you slide it, you just rotate to the ball until it lines up right there with your fingers. And then you don't even have to feel it or think about it in, in, in the game, right? So there's two ways to get to it. You can go four seam slide over or most recently, a lot we can tell about is you go two seam and slide over and you'll feel it perfectly where both fingers line up right there. Now, if you see without me even trying to rotate my wrist, I'm at a different angle on the clock on the ball. So if I throw this thing straight like a fastball, what will actually happen is my hand will turn and I'll pronate it and it won't move, right? So what I need to do is that most Americans, it's funny how when I say this in America, everybody knows right away. Everybody in America has thrown a football. The rest of the world hasn't. So if I say this reference to the rest of the world, it does not work, right? So you, what you got to think about is if, if I, even if I have the grip like this, but my wrist isn't turned, when my arm comes around, if I stay behind it, it ends up being the four seam fastball we want, right? Mm -hmm. So what I like to say is it, it's a football, but it's a quarter turn, right? So the quarter turn lets me come through that long finger is the last thing that's on it. And then it creates this bullet slash spiral spin, right? So what we try to, what we try to do that is this pitch, once you become comfortable with it, is something you can squeeze to have a little bit and you can rip it. You will be able to throw this pitch faster than any of your other breaking balls, which is important, right? Being able to change speed ranges in your pitches is highly important, right? What so, is your, What is your grip pressure on that? Uh, it, okay, so th there's variations to it, right? So w with the variations, if I want – let's – okay, so 
we talk about three different angles of movement with the cutter, right? Because pitches move like an asterisk, right? So pitches can go sideways, down, and then angles, right? Well, if you're really good with spin and movement, you can make things go horizontally, angle, and then down, right? So the pressure and the grip to that all affect. A lot of people talk about finger pressure and stuff like that, right? Well, the problem is with the cutter and the way we're throwing it this way, the traditional cutter, which is this, if I squeeze this right here like this, it'll shoot out and slip and it'll kind of spiral the wrong direction and you'll get a circle. If you can see the bottom of the horseshoe, you'll get a circle in the ball. You don't want any form of circle. When you're throwing this version of the cutter, it's offset spinning four seam white and the hitter cannot see anything to it. Okay. So I'm basically throwing what looks like a different fastball to the hitter, but it's going straight and then it's moving. Right. And so to get that, that's what we need to do to be able to pull across with how we're coming through on it. So the different angles are the further that you are up here, right. The more it goes down when you throw it, when you get into a football, this feels like a, I was telling a guy the other day that worked, it feels like a low slant route in the end zone that you got to get on top and bury. And if you do that, you'll get that nasty down and in type angle. So the farther that you go up of it to closer to a slider and the harder you squeeze it, the more spin, but the slower it will be and the more the action, right? Uh -huh. So if you can start playing with the movement and the, the shape and the profile of the pitch, then you, you can start understanding what pitches are. A lot of people think pitches are names. They're not. They're movement and shapes, right? Um, Three-dimensional pitching says that you go in and out, up and down, and fast and slow. And so being able to do that on each pitch, now you're understanding what Greg Maddox is actually talking about, where he's talking about throwing different pitches at different speeds on purpose. So he's, we got, know he's got 12 to 15 pitches. As exactly, player. right? That's, that's the thing that people, you know, he, he could throw a cutter that would have one inch of movement and do it on purpose, front door to a righty, and then he'd throw a cutter after that might have like nine inches of movement that might come out of that same tunnel and just go all the way across the plate. And then you see the guy go around it. Um, my partner, uh, Cass, brought this up the other day, and I, I agree with what he said. But I think that um, back in the 90s and 80s, a lot of these sliders were actually cutters for what we know now. Right. You know, looking Smaltzy's just banger slider. Dude, that was a that was my Darth Vader, Darth Vader best cutter I've ever thrown in my life pitch um, to be able to get that nasty action. So, you know, it's, it's funny how the game is going around and people worry about the name of it, you know, even right, right, right. The, the, we actually um, three of our three or four of our kids here uh, in San Diego who throw cutters when they go to their school, their coach doesn't know how to call it and sequence it. Right. And immediately a high school kid tells a, a high school coach, I've got a cutter. What does he do? No, you don't. No, you don't. So what we ended up doing was just going, hey, just call it a slider. He'll know exactly what to do with it then. The name doesn't mean anything, right? right? right what right. means something is the action and the movement and the speed of the pitch. As long as your catcher so sure, knows what's coming. Exactly, <laughs> like what, right? what movement is coming, not what yeah. pitch, what movement is coming. Well, as soon as, as soon as he called slider, right, the coach immediately went, that's a hard slider. That's a great pitch, <laughs> right. right? And it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? right. Right. So it, it, it's funny how that all works out. So, you know, so basically with me, what I'm trying to do is I leave a little bit of white space here. If I go white space there, just a little bit, if you can see that that one's going to stay horizontal. And the further I tie, I go to the top of the horseshoe, that one, right. If my fingers on top of it, when I throw it, that one's going to have the angle. And if I get all the way on top of this one, this one's going to Brad Lidge and go straight down. So been throwing them a while. It's pretty fun. <laughs> well, when you came out and threw it on the YouTube channel, it was, I was amazed by the movement and we weren't even at full distance and you weren't even at full speed. And it was just like coasting across like this. And I was like, Whoa, yeah. just seeing it in person was crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. Um, you know, I, it, I don't even know. I know when I wanted to throw it. Um, uh, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know like how it came across. I know somebody had told me, uh, cause it all, I learned how to, which is crazy. I learned how to do it and couldn't even practice it uh, for a long time because when I, I broke my elbow and so I had to like watch videos and do stuff and try to figure out how to do it without throwing it and then once I could finally throw it um, when my arm was healthy it was I was able to like just figure it out so the slider I'm going to go two seam fastball I'm going to come up just a little bit on it and I'm going to tuck the thumb a little bit that's going to make it come out a little bit more but make it be horizontal when it goes from there and then same kind of two seam to go to the curveball. It really depends on 
like I can 12, six it. I can also slurve it. If you saw a video on, on, uh, on, uh, um, Instagram, I just threw like a 72 mile an hour slider with like 2,900 RPMs. Um, but to get to there and slow it down, I go deeper, right? So I'm just playing along this horseshoe um, and whatever I'm trying to do. And the movement profiles are based on the wrist angle and the axis that I'm trying to spin the ball. So like, obviously, if I'm on the slider, I'm trying to get a little bit more around it. That's where the thumb helps it coming out. The curveball, the thumb needs to be a little bit more behind it so I can get in front of it and it doesn't pop up out of my hand and allows the wrist to come all the way down. If the wrist can get this action right here, the ball will actually roll out straight off your hand. And then uh, change up, which is pretty easy one. Um, I, I, I like to play with variant. I'm, I'm all into variants right now, but I call it the rock on change up because it's just easier to grab, right? Like just, you know, um, so that gives there. If this pinky stays right here, the ball will have less movement. If I slide it over and go to there, it'll run more, right? And I do the same thing with my two seam and my four seam. So um, just trying to go from there and then split, same thing. Um, really just trying to dock it off. I'm going to go four seam or I'm going to go two seam, just depending on what fastball I threw in that at bat. So <clears throat> my bread and butter was uh, fastball, four seam fastball, just regular. I was very much bulldog when it came to trying to get you out. It wasn't fancy. It was just, here it is. See if you can hit it. That's what I teach my pitchers, you know, pound the zone, get ahead, be fearless. Um, what I'm thinking when I'm holding the fastball is just try to minimize friction on the ball. Just try to hold it with the minimum amount of pre like uh, pressure with my fingers here, have my wrist be as loose as possible and have as much space here as possible while still feeling like I'm in full control of the ball. So four seamer there. I always liked it as a lefty with the, with the horseshoe inside. So if that went for a righty, that would be like that. Some guys like it like this. That never felt real comfortable for me. Um, so that was four seamer and then two seamer. I didn't throw that often, but I just threw basic two seamer here. I tinkered with here this sometimes, but that didn't really work for me either. Um, I tinkered a little bit with like moving my fingers around, but I was literally like 97% four seam fastball. Um, I would, I would throw a two seamer here and there, but usually it would just get hit. So what was your, that. uh, what was your arm angle on the four seam and what kind of movement did you get? I always got like running up and away. Everybody told me that it felt like I was throwing a rise ball. Um, so a lot of lefties get that natural, that natural run on the ball. Right. I never tried to make it do that, but um, I would just release it and it would oftentimes go away from a righty. And until I started getting more command and getting on top of the ball, like if I kept my arm here at all, like I would be a little bit under it and it would rise, which sort of served me to be effectively wild. I would like shoot to hit down and in on a righty and miss up and away and get a swing and a miss. That happened a lot, but um, I was over the top for sure. I mean, I was here chest leading, elbow leading, and definitely, uh, definitely no sidearm. Um, pretty much standard mechanics over the top. Tried to keep it really simple. And then I threw curveball. I mean, I always tell I, I threw a changeup too, but like I really had a tough time with the changeup my whole life and. I didn't study it enough. I didn't have confidence in it enough. I think if I would have thrown a changeup consistently, especially in hitters counts and had the confidence to do that, I think I would have been twice the pitcher I was. Um, that's what I teach all my guys now, you know, from a young age, as soon as they start pitching, I'd try to teach them to fall in love with the changeup and like really develop it. But I was always a curveball guy. I started throwing a curveball when I was 12 and I had a really good natural curveball that like, I could control, I could throw it 2-0, I could throw it 3-2, um, you know, so that was, that was good. I threw the curveball, there's two-seamer, I just climbed up the side, pretty standard. Most guys either throw it like this, you can see my little weird nubby finger, I cut part of my finger off when I was seven years old, so <laughs> oh, man. I always think if I hadn't have done that, maybe I would have gotten a little bit of extra spin on the ball too, <laughs> but uh or maybe it helped too. So some guys throw it like this at the bottom of the horseshoe. I climb up and throw it at the top and I never knuckled it like this. I don't know if you knuckled it, but like that never served me either. I think maybe because I had the nub finger, I always kept this finger here. And then I just tried to get that nice clean top spin on the ball. Where's so, your uh, thumb placement at on that? So here 
It's right here on this seam. Okay. And then what about on the four seam with the thumb? Right under. Okay, cool. So it's, it's based almost the same. It's just a little bit more to the side with the curveball, like just nestled inside that seam. So I would try to feel myself, I would try to feel the grab inside that seam. It would kind of help me feel like I could get that turnover even more. But for anybody out there that's, you know, pitching guys that's um, listening, I think the key is is to try not to do too much. You know, try not to make a curve. Just be able to spin it. And especially from a young age, don't like just let your arm work for you. Let your arm get out in front and let your arm be loose and free instead of trying to grit your teeth and think I got to make this thing nasty. Uh, most of the time, if you just let it be free and easy, then and just think about getting that spin, then it's going to be a lot more effective for you. Was it uh 12, six or did it have some side run? It was mostly 12, six. I started developing kind of multiple curveballs after my, second third year so I mean I was a big walk guy like I had like 60 strikeouts and 40 walks in my first year but I was always able to grind through and I mean I would come in in the seventh or the eighth and um you know I would walk walk two guys and then strike out two and get a pop-up so that was pretty common okay I got a baseball here I'll start with my four seam it's very simple I'm uh so the camera can see it I'm right on top of the seams here fingertips thumb directly underneath and my whole purpose here is just to let that ball smoothly fly out of my hand creating a, a good spin rate so I'm just trying to really pull down on those seams when I throw the ball loose grip should be able to take it right out of my hand then the change up is kind of the polar opposite that's more deep in my hand I'm holding the, the bottom of the horseshoe here and my whole purpose here is to feel this seam pull on my middle finger and I'm trying to create almost like a, a UFO type of spin. Um, I'd say my, uh, my key for the changeup is arm speed though. Like the spin could be great, but if I'm pushing it or something just looks funny, then, you know, the hitter is going to know right away. And then a change up's no longer a change up. He knows it's coming. So I got that. And then I got a, a slurvy curveball type of pitch. I kind of have a generic curveball grip, maybe a little bit higher up on the horseshoe. And I, just pull down on that hard similar to the fastball where I'm feeling the seam come off right here I'm pulling down on this seam trying to create what looks like four seam spin and just a little bit slurvier and I have an evolving slider cutter not really sure what it's going to be yet and offset four seam I'm working all the way down the seam trying to find out what's comfortable and more importantly what works because I haven't found that yet now I got a question for you on your four seam that you showed and on your cutter slider that you showed, one of them had your pointer finger next to the closed part of the horseshoe and the yep. other one had the, uh, the, when you preset it, you had it to the open side. Does that matter for you or is it just how you grab the ball? So I feel more comfortable grabbing the four seam with the horseshoe on the middle finger side. And the only reason I flip it around for the other is I just, don't like the feeling of it feeling like a four seam, you know, because if I, if I'm going to throw my cutter offset, how I really throw my four seam, it's, it's just going to feel like a fastball. So I'm trying to just get a different feel, kind of have that horseshoe here as kind of like a back for my uh, middle finger. And I get more of a, a pull there than I would if I were to be doing the same. Yeah. So, so it's, it's go ahead. Are you trying to come straight through and down like this on that one? Is there any, like, you're not trying to get on top or get around. You're coming straight down and through and kind of, like, cutting through the ball with that one? Yeah, yeah, especially with the slider. When, I'm, uh, when I get more deep into the horseshoe here, I try to really feel middle finger and my thumb. And my whole, like, idea is pulling down on the ball, trying to create that spin. The cutter is a little bit different. I'm, I'm just simply trying Mariano Rivera's pitch grip and method I don't really know how he does it as it works for me yet but I'm trying to throw fastball 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 last second just turn a little bit and create a little bit of spin what's your best pitch um I would say my fastball and then what do you try to what are you trying to accomplish when you're throwing the fastball are you are you overhand a little bit lower arm angle what kind of movement do you get on your fastball I'm more overhand and uh, my fastball is a lot of ride to it I would try to minimize any movement besides ride so that's, again, why I have the small grip, thumb underneath, fingers right on top. It's trying to create that, you know, perfect spin rate. 